Now I've started on my next project and it's something a bit weird and experimental but the problem with experimental stuff is you don't want to waste your decent wood on something experimental but if you use sort of um, grotty wood or you know inferior wood then you're not really going to learn much from your experiments so anyway I found myself a piece of yew heartwood that wasn't long enough to make a pair of billets or such like but was fairly substantial I mean it's got a few knots in it and what I'm trying to make is a heavyweight bamboo backed bow deflexed in the center with long rigid levers coming out at either end maybe with string bridges to lift the string off the levers at the end and give it some let off once it starts drawing anyway game plan at the minute I've got this block of yew here uh, it's about 50 odd inch 52 inches long uh, it looks pretty much like a bit of 2B1 but it's tapered from the center thickness tapered at about two millimeters every six inches anyway it's got some taper on it thickness taper I've got it steam in there and what I'm going to do is once it's had a good old steam pull it out of that tube and bend it over it's a block of wood that big yeah, it's a block of wood about just over two and a half I'll put the middle of it on there and clamp down either end onto this straight bit of two and two with a pair of G-clamps. That should give it a nice bit of deflex in the middle. Of course some of that will bend out. And then what I'll do, now I've done my gentle steam bend on this um, chunky U stave, but this um, dark manky patch was worse than I thought. I've dug it out a bit. I could just fill it with you dust and epoxy. Uh, or I could saw across there, saw across there, going down to you know about say quarter inch or so and lay in a straight block because it's going to be in compression. Actually that might be the best way to do it. The other thing of course is this black pith line but I think most of this will disappear as the bow's shaped. I've got the off cuts of you. Nice thick bit at that end. that probably make a block to go in. Yeah, I think that's probably the game plan. So when I saw it out I'll probably, probably go to about there and maybe right back here. It's probably going to have a riser block on there anyway, but you don't, what you don't want is, is a cavity. Just filling it with dust and epoxy would probably be fine as it's got a riser block over. But as I shape in from the sides, you know, it might break into the epoxy and dust. It might just look a bit manky. Yeah, anyhow, there you go. There we are. I've sawn out that section. And you can see there's no real rot left. Just a little bit of discoloration. And I've cut a piece from one of the off cuts. Being careful to keep the grain curving in the same way. So the rings, you can see the curve of the rings. So the centre of the tree was about there, similarly to where it is here. And that will just drop in nicely like that. So I'll get that glued up and clamped. Note, cunningly placed arrows to make sure I don't keep turning it back and forth and around the wrong way. Anyway, I'll get that glued in. I don't know if I was on video for that last one, so I'll just do a retake. There, I've sawn out that rot. And you can see there's, there's nothing really showing on the surface of the wood other than a little light discoloration. No real rot left. Cut out a little off cut with the grain running the same way as it is on the actual stave. So 
where my thumbnail is, that was like the centre of the log. Same as it is there. So I'll glue that in like that. Arrows to on to make sure I don't keep turning a bit of wood back and forth. It's a nice snug fit. I'll get that glued and then the job's a good one. That's the patch all glued in and cleaned up. And I've tidied up the faces. So the next step is um, plain up some bamboo. There's a bit of bamboo I'd used in one of the videos talking about how Yumi bends. I just cut some knocks on the end and strung it. But I'll clean up this face, get that all planed up, sanded flat. That can get glued on. And then we can start thinking about what we're going to do for levers. Now I've got the bamboo glued onto the back of the stave. I just bound it round with the um, old inner tube as per usual. But then I've clamped down each end with a, a block, about a two inch block under there. I gave it good flexing first to make sure the glue spread because um, there was about an inch and a half. So I've, I've only, you know, bent it back that extra like half inch. Uh, so I've not, you know, sort of overstressed it or tried to make it bend through some stupid amount. Uh, leave that overnight, see how it is in the morning. This is the slightly weird bamboo back to you um, deflex, reflex, lever bow or whatever you want. Uh, it's about an inch and three quarter deflex in total. So what I want to do is sort of winch it back to what would be a brace height and that should give me an idea of the angle I want for the levers because what I want is the string to be sitting about here sort of on the lever bridges where the levers start at brace and over the first few inches of draw then as it draws the string lifts off the levers giving you extra leverage making it easier to pull so we want it to start at a very heavy draw weight and then as the string lifts off the levers the draw weight decreases how on earth do you work out something like that I'm not sure you could even work it out with a fancy computer simulation program. For the lever bow project, I've got the U-core and a bamboo back glued up, but it's so stiff I can't pull it back far enough to really see how it's going to work with the levers. So what I've done is I've just taken an ash slat uh, it's edge grain, so the, looking at the end, the grain's running that way, not that way. Just roughed it out on the bandsaw and belt sander to get a reasonable taper. This way I can pull it to brace, which is where I'd want the string to sit on the end of the bow, but not the tip of the lever. Then pull it a bit more and work out where I want the lever to start acting and sort of work out the angles. It's, as far as I can tell, it's the only way I'm going to get some sort of idea. So if I pull this back, so that would be about brace height. So about eight inches. So that. Could be that. That's near a brace, it's quite deceptive. So, at no expense, I've made a clever pointer. Now, so if we look across, that's probably about brace height. And so the lever could come out at this angle. Right, what I'm trying to do here is work out the angle that the levers will need to be on this lever bow. So this is a, a lightweight slat of ash that I've knocked up because the heavier stave is just too heavy to, to bend far enough to see what's going on because I've already pulled it to 110, it's barely coming back at all. But if I experiment with this, I might be able to get some idea of the angle of the levers 
because I just can't brace that at the moment. But I don't want to weaken it so much that I can brace it and then find it's too weak for the final bow. Anyway, look, there we are at a reasonable brace. So if I had the levers coming straight out here, then the string would lift off the string bridge here almost immediately you started drawing. So the levers are going to have to angle this way a little bit. But how much? That's the question. Well, if we say, say for the sake of argument, we want them to the levers to lift when we've pulled it back ooh, an extra nine inches, say. Well, just looking at bows, you'll find the tip of a bow moves, if that moves one inch, the string comes back three, roughly. So if we say, well, we want to find out the angle of this when the tips have come back three inches. Let's have a look. So when the tips are about here, I want to look at the relative angles. So we pull that till the tips are about there. I know it's not quite symmetrical, but this is all just a lash up. I've got no idea how on earth you'd work it out, you know, mathematically or even on a CAD system. So I'm just doing it this way. It's all, it's all a guesstimate, but it's probably more accurate than just building it and hoping. So I've tied that off. We now say, at this point, we want the string to just be lifting off the lever. So if the lever was at this angle, if the lever was at this angle, we'd see any further draw and the string will lift off the tip. And, but what is that angle relative to the bow limb? Well, with this cunning homemade, um, there's a fancy name for it, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, good old fashioned angle gauge. So I can set that, and that's going to be the angle of my lever on the tip of the bow. We let the bow back down. That's the angle of what it's going to look like. And if we pop the string off, this was just tapered by eye on the bandsaw. It doesn't profess to be accurate. That's the angle of our lever that we want on the unstrung bow. And you can see it's a bit extreme. Uh, but when I make it, if I make it about that wide, it will give me some margin of error. Or I can make it less of an angle, but raise the string up on a string bridge here. So there's still all sorts of compromises, but at least I've got some sort of idea. And this even gives me the opportunity of mocking it up. I mean, I've got this. So, and it's very low draw weight, so I could mock up some fairly flimsy levers just to see how they behave. Because I don't want to waste all the work I've put into this great chunk of yew and bamboo by, you know, putting levers on it that are at the wrong angle or just completely useless. It's that trade-off. How much work do you put into your experiment? Do you go quick and dirty or do you try and work everything out to the nth degree and find it doesn't work anyway? Because these things never do. They're, they're never quite right. It's always, you know, a compromise. Anyhow, that's enough for now. Shows you what I'm getting up to.